A lot of the confusion that people have about Vastu and Vastu is that it's a lost science. The science of manifestation was lost. Lost to human awareness for some hundreds of years. Um, a lot of this science is actually found in the Veda and Upanishads. And in the advanced courses, I do quite a bit of recitation of Vedic scriptures that actually are describing Vastu or Vastu. It's all over the place in the Rig Veda, Sama Veda. People like to ascribe it to a Tarva Veda, but it's everywhere. Now, the progenitor of this science, we call it myonic science. And you might be wondering why that is. And you may have read it in Fabric of the Universe. We call it myonic science because of all of the disturbances in the world about this, about this science. The, the, the uh, president of India actually many years ago suggested to Stapati that he rename it so that it's not confused with all of the people out there thinking they're doing Vastu. They're, they, they're not intentionally harming. They're not intentionally doing what they're doing. They think they're doing the right thing. But it's our duty to now clear it up. We hold that the progenitor of this knowledge is Mayan, a man named Mayan, M-A-Y-A-N. And he came from a continent that existed about 10,500 years ago, 10,200 years ago, sort of at the south of India. He's, he's in various texts as an enlightened siddha. And he's referred to as asura. And that has become a word to mean demon. But if you look in a Sanskrit dictionary, the real root of asura is enlightened, powerful being. Who could perform miracles? That's what Asura means. Asura Maya, Maya Asura was an enlightened man. He had a cognition, which he wrote here, about dance, music, architecture, about sculpture, about how consciousness manifests itself as the material world. How it does it exactly how it does it. He had this cognition. People think that Mayan got the knowledge from the god of the sun, from the sun in the sky. No. All you have to do is read the Surya Siddhanta. It tells you where the knowledge came from. This luminous being. The thing about the word Surya is that it's used to describe the sun because it's luminous. But it's also used to describe consciousness itself, Brahman, quantum field. The most luminous being. Going within yourself, attending to your Atman, and through the attendance of Atman, and you're going to learn how to attend to your Atman in this class. As you put your attention on your Atman in an unwavering but simple way, Atman grows. The luminosity of consciousness grows in your cave of the heart. And that's what he did. And so in this penance, he was able to connect with Brahman itself. Brahman said to him, being a being, said to him, you know what? People just can't take me. They just can't stand it. I'm, I'm just too powerful. So what I'm going to do, you have done penance. I can see you want this knowledge. So I'm going to send you the man who is like me. 
I'm going to send you the man. I'm going to give you this knowledge through the man who is like me. Do you know what the prefix of man, man, M-A-N is? You know, you know what that means? Man. Man, man is... means measured. Manasara. Measurement. Book of measurement. Mana, ma, man. Mana, man. There's a word in Mayanic science called manasutras. It's consciousness raining down upon a building. And we'll talk more about this. Mana, measured frequencies of consciousness. So I'm going to send you the measure of me, that thing which is like me, this measured frequency. OK, so the story goes, people say, oh, so some man came and taught Mayan this. If you stop there. That's what you've come to think. Some great man came and taught Mayan this work. If you read down to chapter 10, by the way, this quote I think is in Fabric of the Universe. If you read it, I'm repeating the story. Today's class is about Fabric of the Universe. So if you read 10 chapters down, Mayan addresses this man, Man. He says, Oh, omniscient one. Do you call, do I call you omniscient one? Do you, do you call me omniscient one? Well, maybe you should, no. Do you call me the omniscient one? No. You don't call another human being oh, omniscient one. There's only one thing that can be addressed as omniscient one. Who is that? Brahman, quantum field, creative intelligence, the one. That's the only one that can be addressed as omniscient one. That tells us where Mayan got this knowledge. Do you understand my point? Yes. Mm -hmm. Supreme being is omnipresent. And the exceptional art is eternal. Experience of supreme being's consciousness led me to worship spiritual light. Blessings of Supreme Being help me visualize Nataraja, the dance of Shiva, vibration of the thread of consciousness. Blessings of the Supreme Being help me create this magnificent art. Dance, sculpture, music, architecture, poetry. Vastu Sanat, Ayana Sanat.